Hi guys, Mark here from Perth Four Driving Camping. This video is all about sharing my experience getting a GVM or gross vehicle mass upgrade on my 2018 Mitsubishi Pajero Sport in WA in 2021. Please note this video is not advice. I'm not a mechanic or engineer, and this is my personal experience. If you're viewing this from outside of WA, you'll need to follow directions with your relevant Department of Transport. So some extra context behind this video, I've already had aftermarket suspension installed on the Pajero Sport. So this process really relates to how you go about getting a GVM upgrade, um, if that's something you want to explore. Um, I know that that might relate to many of you out there who have upgraded your suspension, perhaps with the intention of going off road uh, or a little bit of light towing. Um, but these are the steps that um, you can follow if you do decide to go down the route of a GVM upgrade uh, down the track. I guess to set the scene, I purchased my vehicle in 2019 and since then I've done various modifications such as adding an Ironman steel bull bar, run the winch, rear draw and drop slide, added bigger light truck all-terrain tires, bash plates etc. You're probably getting the picture by now, this all adds weight. Now to improve drivability and off-road capability, I added 2 inch Ironman lift which included foam cell shocks, heavy duty front springs and medium load rear springs. The reason I went with the rear medium springs was due to these still having up to 250 kilograms additional load, which was more than sufficient for the draw system I had, which weighs about 60 kilos and occasional uh, towing that I was doing. Now for every type of vehicle, there's pros and cons. And one of the downsides of a wagon compared to say a dual cab ute is the available payload or essentially the weight you can carry in your vehicle. My 2018 Pajero Sport has a payload of 610 kilos. And now when you start adding mods, add, throw in your passengers, a little cargo, things can get very tight very quickly. And you can risk going over your GVM. And for many reasons, but most importantly, safety, this is just not something you want to mess with. Our personal family circumstances have changed and we've been considering a full-size or hybrid caravan for some time. Some of you would have seen our trips in the Jayco Dove, um, which have been great in the past. As we started to look into a caravan, I had to really consider weights even more than before. I was asking myself, you know, what's the max weight we can carry safely? Is now, you know, is this vehicle now right for us? Uh, invested in my vehicle, and the modifications and knowing its off-road capability, the preference was ultimately to keep the car. So this led me to look into GVM upgrade. Initially, I spent some time asking questions on the Pajero Sport forums on Facebook. And as a side note, if any of you own a four-wheel drive or are new to four-wheel driving, forums can be a really good way to understand common faults for your cars or just share experiences with other drivers. And I've definitely learned a lot about my vehicle from being part of these groups. So back to the GVM upgrade question. Uh, the reality was that there weren't many individuals with Pajero Sports that have gone through this process. I did reach out to one person and a shout out here to Joe in Perth, many thanks. Um, he had successfully had his GVM upgraded and was happy to share his experience with me. Um, I reached out to an engineer called Vlad who'd also worked with Joe. Um, now, knowing GVM upgrade was a possibility, I wanted to understand if the upgraded suspension on the Pajero Sport could be approved retrospectively by an engineer to upgrade the GVM. Um, as I'd already paid and, and spent my, you know, my hard-earned money on this upgraded suspension, uh, this is really where the process started. And full transparency, if you go down this route, it isn't quick and there's quite a few steps you need to follow. I started discussions with my engineer in July 2021, and it took four months to get finalized. And just a caveat here, this video isn't going into the pros and cons of a GVM upgrade. There are plenty of videos around on YouTube that go into this very topic. And if this is something you're considering, I would suggest you speak to an engineer direct and get some personal advice that 
uh, you know, is tailored to your needs. And after I decided this was the route I wanted to go down, I understood that um, it would only be a modest GVM upgrade. However, I knew that would make a big difference to our plans um, to upgrade from the camper trailer and to tow a caravan. Um, as one of the barriers to towing is the tow ball weight, uh, which comes off your vehicle's payload. Now, if considering a GVM upgrade after the vehicle is registered, you also need to be aware that your uh, gross combination mass, or GCM, uh, put simply, the, the total weight of your vehicle and what you're towing cannot change. Here are the steps I went through to achieve the GVM upgrade. Step one, I contacted an engineer. I will leave Vlad's contact details in the description below. Um, however, there's also a list of engineers on the WA Department of, we of Transport website. Uh, there was a lot of email exchange and questions from myself uh, and Vlad was very accommodating here. A few things that you need to be aware once you engage an engineer. You will need to agree on what you want to achieve and you'll be asked to supply photos of your compliance plate, etc. And you'll need to find out information about your suspension, such as the spring load rates of the springs. Agree on an engineer's price uh, to deliver the services, uh, which will include a final assessment of the vehicle and a brake load test. Step three, you will need to know if your vehicle is under the 50 millimeter legal limit in WA. Now my vehicle has bigger wheels and tires along with the upgraded suspension and it's just under the 50 millimeter limit. There's a few ways you can measure the height of your vehicle, but I did it the following way. With my vehicle in the garage, I measured the height of the floor to the roof. Then measure the height of the floor to the highest point of your vehicle, not including the roof racks. Now, if you're doing this at home, you might wanna use a broomstick handle to help measure here, so you can overhang this to the side of your car. Then subtract the difference between these two figures. You can compare this to the standard height of your vehicle from factory. Uh, this should be located in your manual. In my Pajero Sport, it's listed as 1.8 meters. If your vehicle is over 50 millimeters, you will incur quite a bit of additional costs as the engineer will need to perform a lane change test and ESC test, which is a computer simulation to determine how your vehicle behaves on the road. As a rough guide, I've been advised this can be up to $1,200 for the lane uh, change test and a further $500 for the ESC test. As I, as I didn't require these additional tests, I just had the engineer's fees, which were $660 X GST. Step four, you will need to know the current weight of your vehicle and find your nearest weigh bridge. I visited Tom's tow bars in Wangara, which was around $35. Step five, you'll need to complete a complex modifications form via the WA Department of Transport's website. From submitting this form, it took approximately seven weeks to get a response. When you do hear back from the Department of Transport, unless there's any issues, You'll, you'll receive an approval in principles letter, which will allow you to progress further with your engineer. Step six. Now this step was relating to an earlier comment I made on spring load rates. As I installed heavy duty front springs and, and the rears were medium springs, the spring load rates on the rears were not deemed sufficient by the engineer to achieve a GVM upgrade. As such, I was required to upgrade the rear springs to heavier duty springs, which was the cost of approx $335 plus installation. Hey guys, so I'm just here at 4x4 Extras in Wangara and the Pajero Sports in getting some upgraded rear uh, springs. So it's getting the constant load rear springs today, which will allow me to progress the GVM upgrade. In step seven, you'll need to book a time to meet your engineer in person. The engineer will do a thorough assessment of your vehicle from top to bottom um, and also perform a brake load test. This is achieved by attaching a small device to the brake pedal and you'll perform a series of brake exercises to make sure your vehicle can withstand the additional load put on the brakes. 
when your vehicle is approved to the new GVM limit. In step eight, the engineer submits their report to the Department of Transport. And here you wait. Uh, mine was sent to the Department of Transport on the 15th of September and an email approval came through on the 28th of September. Okay, we're into the final step. Um, and this is to book your vehicle into an authorised inspection centre. I visited Mindari uh, Workshop and Auto Electrical. Um, and here you need to apply online for a vehicle modification permit prior to your inspection, which is just under $74 and can be done through the Department of Transport. Um, and then you've got about another $160 um, at your inspection to um, check over the vehicle uh, one more time. Okay, so we've just had the vehicle examined at uh, Mindari Workshop and Auto Electrical. Uh, the good news is the vehicle uh, passed the test. Um, so now the vehicle's GVM has been upgraded. So um, long process, but uh, great to get it done. Um, the guys here were great today. So that's pretty much the end of the journey. Uh, but I look forward to uh, more adventures and uh, a bit of towing in uh, future upcoming videos. So in closing, what are my thoughts? Do I have any regrets? Uh, yes, it took a long time. Uh, all up the exercise costs close to $1,500 uh, and would have been less if we had the upgraded um, rear springs to start with. Um, I've achieved a GVM increase of 220 kilograms uh, and that will make a big difference when we uh, are towing. Uh, uh, we'll never overload the car. Um, at the end of the day, it's a 2.4 litre turbo diesel. Um, but we've achieved the GVM upgrade safely and um, also it's uh, legally compliant, which is um, really important. I hope you found today's video interesting. And if you're not already following the channel, please hit that subscribe button and bell icon to be notified of future videos. See you on the tracks.